Are you still with me? If anybody's tired, I'm tired. But I'm not really tired, I'm just energized. Book of John, chapter 12. Book of John, chapter 12. Pastor Michael Rowan, I'm under authority. He is the pastor. He's my pastor. I've traveled all over the country and around the world, and I say this whenever I go, that I submit to authority. He kept saying, do whatever you want to do, Benny. So I will do that. I want to take just a few minutes just to share with you. Can I share with you just a, a quick word from the Word of God here? Yeah. Now we're going to do something that to my knowledge has never been done at, at, at Brandon by Fire. Maybe it has. I don't know. John chapter 12. If you're there looking at your Bible, say amen to me. Amen. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was who had, been, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. Then they made him a supper and Martha served, but Lazarus who sat at the table. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikner. Speak perfume. Anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house, somebody say, in the house. The house. Somebody say, in the house. the house. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Please, verse 4. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. Somebody say thief. thief. And had the money box, and he used to take what was put in. Let me stop there. He was not only a thief, he was a dumb thief. It's one thing to steal, but let me just help you out, young people. Don't steal from God. I said, don't steal from God. Come on, Belkin, you don't steal from God. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Father, help me to speak just for the next few moments, Lord God. Lord, what you have laid on my heart now, Father, for this great conference, one of the world's greatest conferences. For every young person, thank you for Lord God. Literally, Lord, at least 100 people made it right tonight. Lord, so many people got healed. We didn't have time, Lord God, to give all the testimonies. But we do one thing, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the honor goes to Jesus Christ. Come on, if you're going to clap, really give a big hand clap in Jesus' name. How many of you would say, now you're passionate for Jesus? How many of you would say, now more than ever, you're passionate for Jesus. Here's a great story in the Bible that I read to you. And very quickly, I just want to share a few points from here. So we have a story of Jesus. And Jesus now is getting ready to go to the cross. This is not the last supper, but this is one of the last meals that he's having with his disciples. And you see in the text here, as Jesus is eating, that Mary and Martha are serving. That all of a sudden, Mary comes back in. And she comes back in, not with another meal, not with something more to drink, but rather she comes with this expensive spikner, this spikner, this perfume. In other contexts of scripture, we read that this was a year's worth of wages. It cost this lady a lot. But all of a sudden now, this woman's passion for Jesus explodes on the scene. And in the context, context of this story, I want to share with you five quick things that passionate people do. Listen to me because it's important. Number one, passionate people give their best in excess. Notice what she does when she comes in. She comes back in. The disciples are going, what's she doing? And the Bible says that she takes this uh, jar and she pours all the oil all over Jesus. She kneels down and now she begins to wipe and rub and anoint Jesus with her hair. And the whole house is filled with his odor. Judas Iscariot, who is religious, 
is upset by the offering that this woman gives to Jesus. Religion will always be upset when somebody gives everything to Jesus. Oh, you can get on fire for God, but just don't get too on fire. Or you go back home from BBF and your friends will say, well, I know you're a Christian. I know you love God, but come on, you can still do a few of these things. See, religion always gets upset if you give a lot to Jesus. But see, passion doesn't care. Because this lady now busts into this all men's club and now she begins because she's passionate she begins to give her best in excess she wasn't an American she didn't do a little dab or do you Jesus we have a generation that has liked to in the past give Jesus a little dab of worship we've had people that Give Jesus a little, a little tip at the offering. We have an American church that has in the past just given Jesus just a little bit. But something is happening in this generation. Passion is exploding in your heart. And now you want to give God your life. See, passionate people always give their best in excess. Take the world, for example. I'm a sports fan. And I like watching sports. And when football season comes around, you have different teams that you may like. And you can have the Green Bay Packers. Don't start cheering or whatever. Just listen to the story just for a second. And I've watched Green Bay Packer fans, grown men who are too dignified to worship in church. They don't want to get too emotional in church but then these same guys go to a green bay packer game and put blocks of cheese on their heads <laughs> come on help me preach friends i see grown men go to the oakland raiders games and they're dressed up like pirates and have silver and black faces and dress up with skulls and all kinds of crazy stuff a st louis rams fan comes with with rams horns on his head and everybody looks and says wow look at those are real football fans and the more passionate you are for your team the more people look at you and think you're cool one time I was watching a Green Bay Packer game, true story. And uh, John Madden was the one that was announcing the football game. And all of a sudden, they're scanning across the crowd. And all of a sudden, you, they ran into this, this like row of men. And these row of men were kind of like, like overly endowed. They were fat. And they had their faces painted. And they're screaming. And when the camera got on them, they did something that was the sickest thing I've ever seen. See, because passionate people give their best in excess, and number two, passionate people really don't care about the opinions of others. See, this woman didn't care what everybody else thought when she's, when she's wiping Jesus' feet and she's doing all this to Jesus. She could care less what his scary thought. She could care less what the disciples thought. Well, these football fans are there, and when the camera gets on them, can I tell you something? They did the sickest thing. The first guy rips up his jersey. <laughs> These guys were not dark. Snow blind! Come on. The first guy in his big old fat belly had a green P, letter P. The next guy had an A, C, K, E, R, and spelled out Packers on their bellies, and then they did the wave. Come on, help the preacher priest there, friends. I went just like you. Sick, sick, sick. And all of a sudden, John Madden goes, look at those guys. They're passionate about their team. And they are real football fans. I looked at the screen and said, they are really sick, fat, white men. Come on, somebody. 
But those guys didn't care. They didn't care if 20 million people across America saw them. They were proud of their Green Bay Packers. Well, I got something to say to John Madden. There are real Christians at Brandon by Fire. I, I said there's real Christians at Brandon by Fire. Oh, you know, Benny, I, I'm not Hispanic. I, it's not my culture. You know, I, it has nothing to do with your ethnicity. It has nothing to do if you're dark like me or white like my wife. No, when you become born again, you get born again into the kingdom culture of God. And his kingdom is filled with shouting and dancing and clapping and rejoicing. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of Eminem having more people yell for him with greater intensity than Jesus has for him. Oh, I know you like me as long as I don't talk about your bands. Oh, you're nice. I like you, Perez. I like that healing stuff. I like people getting saved. But don't talk about my Eminem. My wife says, don't mention names. Okay, then I'll just mention initials. Don't talk about my BS. Britney Spears. <laughs> I'm not that innocent. <laughs> Can I tell you something? She ain't that talented. See, that upsets some of you. That upsets some of you. That upsets some. It's like, well, you know, well, you know, well. No, 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 no. You don't know. You think I let my son watch Britney? You think I let my daughter say, dress like her? Let me tell you something about M&M's. M&M's should be eaten, not listened to. It's my opinion. Does that music, does Britney really get you in the groove of wanting to worship a holy God? Does Christina Aguilera? As she has a video called Beautiful that espouses homosexuality? I don't hate homosexuals. But homosexuality is still a sin. Hold on before y'all shout. Last time I read my Bible, you sleeping with the opposite sex outside of marriage is a sin. Well, it's easy for you to say you're married. Let me just tell you something. I'm 38. I didn't get married till I was 33. And I was the big V, a virgin when I got married at 33. I just want to say this. I think I said it the first week. Because you know what? I'm passionate about Jesus, and passionate people really don't care about the opinions of others. 
I don't care who gets upset. I don't care if, 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 if some guy politically incorrect thinks Christians are a bunch of lunatics. It doesn't matter what he thinks. It doesn't matter what other people say. All I know is that this book, the written word of God, all I know is that Jesus shed his blood on a cross and he didn't do it in vain for us to live life haphazardly. No, he died on a cross for us to live radically for him. Oh, when I, listen to him, when I got married, there were 1,400 people that came to my wedding. 1,400. I was excited because that meant about 1,400 gifts. Which meant about 1,400 returns. Come on, somebody. Which meant I got a lot of money for my honeymoon. And I remember when, when my wife was walking down. My wife is beautiful. She's gorgeous. She hates, she's not here, so I'll tell you. She was, she was uh, in a beauty pageant representing the state of Oregon. Okay? And thank you very much. All right. One Oregonian here. And uh, when she was walking down, man, I just saw her walking down. Beautiful. 1,400 people. She came up on the platform after, you know, her father gave her away. I grabbed her, pulled her up. And uh, we're standing there, and she sings to me, and and because she didn't want me to sing to her to ruin the wedding, so she sang. <laughs> and uh, so, and all of a sudden, I just start to bawl and start to cry, and everybody now is like, "Oh, what a sensitive guy he is." They had no clue. I say no clue what's going on in my head. And I'm standing there, and I'm weeping, as I grab my my wife's hands, and I'm weeping and I'm crying, and all of a sudden, I'm thanking God on the platform. Because I'm saying, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I didn't sleep with Mary. Thank you that I didn't do anything. Come on with Joanne. Thank you, Lord God. Come on, that I kept myself pure with this. Watch me. Hold it. And I'm thanking God. See, see, listen to me. I was not saying up there, man, I should have did it with Susie. I had my opportunity. Come on with Brittany. Man, why didn't I take advantage Come on, of Teresa. I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking, God, I'm weeping. I'm crying. I'm a virgin. And, and you're like, wow, that's incredible. Listen, I chewed a lot of leather. Took a lot of cold showers and exercise. Come on, somebody. And I ran because the Bible said, come on, flee youthful lusts. So I was running for my life. Are you hearing me? And man, can I tell you something? Watch this. I grabbed my wife's hand. We said the vow. See, the wedding day is really, the ceremony is really for the woman. But the honeymoon, baby. Come on, it's for me. So we had 1,400 people. Can you imagine a reception line with 1,400 people? It's like, you know what? After about two hours, I'm done. I'm done. Get that limo up here. Pick me and my wife up. I got some business to attend to. Don't get all weird with me. Amen. I jumped in that limo. We sped off. Come on. Uh, we sped off to the, uh, to the hotel. We park at the hotel. Nicest hotel in Seattle. Get out. Man, my wife's looking beautiful. I check on in. I had her friends get there like, like during... Uh, during the reception, and they had they went in there and they had decorated the room. Come on, with rose petals all the way down when you walked in. Come on, candles lit. Come on, music playing. Man, the bath was drawn with freshly hot water with 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 candles. Come on, in the bathroom with rose petals flowing around. Notice that everybody that's screaming has a high pitch. Okay. And so, so, man, my wife, I said, come on, baby. And I walked in there, and she was like, wow, this is incredible. I said, oh, yeah, this is incredible. And I, I got her, and, man, I, I made a beeline right for the bedroom. Ow! So I grabbed my wife. We got near that bed, and there's petals everywhere. It's a romantic moment. And all of a sudden, I know you don't believe this, the anointing of the Holy Spirit came. (laughs) 
So you go ahead, go ahead. You go ahead and sleep around with five or six or seven people and see how special that is. Doesn't even compare. I grabbed my wife's hand and immediately we both knelt down by the bed and we had a prayer meeting. And we both looked up because she was a virgin. I said, oh God, thank you. And man, we start speaking in tongues. We start praying. The power of God came, man. It was absolutely phenomenal. Five minutes go by. Ten minutes go by. Fifteen minutes go by. I said, God, that's enough. <laughs> Come on, are you with me? And I know this is going to sound weird, but I'll say it because they've been saying some weird stuff here at Brownsville lately. And I, I prayed, and my wife, man, she's crying, I'm crying. I grab her hand, and I said, amen. And I felt the favor of God come on me, and I felt the Holy Spirit say, son, I bless this because you've done it the right way. Make me proud. Somebody say amen. I believe the word, be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> See, the problem is, is that, is that, is that the church is kind of strange because we hammer people, don't have sex and stay pure, which I do all the time. But you know what? When you get married, <laughs> I was a virgin till 34, but I've made up for lost time, baby. Let me tell you that much. It pays, come on, to do it God's way. Come on, somebody. It pays to do it God's way. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. I mean, you, you say sex, and all the guys go, oh, he's anointed. That boy's in on it. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? See, passionate people, listen, I got to hurry. Passionate people don't give their best and excess. Number two, passionate people don't care about the opinions of others. Passionate people leave a great smell behind. <laughs> what does this woman do? Come on, she busts a move. Spills his perfume and says the whole house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Watch me. Your passion for Jesus and my passion for Jesus literally can penetrate the atmosphere of our schools, could begin to penetrate, man, I feel the anointing, begin to penetrate, come on, the atmosphere of our homes, of our neighborhoods. Now when you start walking, come on, the atmosphere of heaven begins to fill the place where you are. It's like, it's like, watch this, it's like a Holy Ghost invasion. You walk onto your campus this coming fall, and it's like, I'm going to leave a great smell behind. You're actually going to smile at your teacher. Well, I know you want revival to break out. Why don't you start doing your homework, and that'll probably slay your teacher in her seat. Well, Pastor, I was praying in tongues. I didn't have time to do my homework. Oh, grow up. Do your homework, man. That'll leave a great smell. Come on in your classroom. See, watch me. You can change the atmosphere of cities. You can change the atmosphere, come on, of a state. Come on, we can change the atmosphere, come on, of a nation. So don't you know who you are? When you walk into a place, all the hosts of heaven, come on, are backing you up. I don't care if it's a hellhole. You walk in there with you and your guardian angel and all of heaven backing you up. And when you march in there, demons, you shouldn't be afraid of demons. Come on. Demons should be afraid of you. When you walk into a place, watch me. When you walk into a place, all of a sudden demons go, ah, they're separated by fire, Christians. Ah, ah. You can change your atmosphere. 
How do I change it? Pastor Benny, why don't you just worship God at school? Walk down the hallway, start singing the latest top 40 worship song. And somebody's singing their song. Hey, what song are you singing? Oh, it's number one on the charts. Really? Uh, what charts? R&B, pop, rock? Oh, it's the highest chart in the land. Really? Who, who, who's the guy that sings? Oh, JC is the band. JC? Never heard of him. Oh, you will. You will. The music actually changes lives. And you think that's strange, that's weird, but I'm sick and tired. I know I'm going to get in trouble. I'm sick and tired of artists out there. Can I say it? Now, I'm not, I'm not against a genre of music, but it happens to be that a lot of hip-hop artists start rapping about women like they're pieces of meat, like they're sex objects, like, like they should be used, come on, and abused, and, and somehow, some way, And they get to drive the escalates. They get to live in the big old cribs. Come on, somebody help me preach. Why don't, listen, listen. Why don't, why don't NBC and Dateline in 2020 go after them? Because what they're doing is polluting the nation, polluting the country, polluting young people. Why don't they go after them and leave the men of God alone? I like escalates. I want to go boom, boom, boom to the Jesus boom. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. See, who's passionate for God? Does lift your hand? You're passionate. You have the passion for God. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? You can impact your atmosphere. I'm almost done. Yo, quiet on me. You know what? I can't finish. It's too late. So I just have to end right now. Okay. Thank you. How many will give me just two more minutes and then I'll finish? Just two more. Get, hold on. Shh. Just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Two more minutes. Lift your hand high, please. Two more minutes. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twenty. Okay, good. Put your hand down. Number one, passionate people. Watch me. Passionate people. Watch. Give their best in excess. Number two, passionate people don't care about the opinions of others. Number three, passionate people leave a great smell behind. You impact the atmosphere of where you go. Number four, Passionate people bring an anointing to bring others to Christ. Watch how powerful this is. And then the keyboardists will come back up because that's a good sign we're ending. Watch this. Mary anoints Jesus' feet. It's approximately seven to ten days before his crucifixion. Watch me. The oil that she's rubbing into his feet wasn't like the perfume or cologne that you wear today. This oil was expensive, so when you put it on the skin and rubbed it in, it would last, some commentaries say, seven days up to 14 days. Jesus is going to be crucified in about 10. This is so good. Jesus now gets crucified. You know this story? beaten and, and battered and bruised and, and he's whipped and he's, he looks unrecognizable and they begin to put a cross on him and he carries it all the way up almost to Golgotha and he stumbles and he falls and they give the cross to Simon the Cyrene and say pick up his cross and he picks up his cross and he takes it up for Jesus they lay Jesus down on that cross and they begin to nail spikes in his wrists and spikes in his ankles and they lift him up and drop that cross and now his body convulses in pain. And people spat on him. And said, if you're the son of God, come down and we'll believe you now. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. And Jesus now is on the cross. Crucifixion did not kill you because of the spikes in your wrists and your ankles. You died in crucifixion because of suffocation. Because they had to, watch me, 
push up and breathe in every time they pushed up excruciating pain shooting through their body but they needed a breath or else they would die of suffocation and there's Jesus and he's pushing up and he's breathing in and at that moment in time he smelled the oil and he said anything back she gave everything that he prompted her to give watch me what kept Jesus on the cross he will tell you someday that many things kept him on the cross but listen to me what helped keep him on the cross was the oil that somebody rubbed into his feet because Jesus said, leave her alone. She's preparing me for my burial. It's powerful. Did you know that your passion for Jesus carries an anointing to bring others to Jesus? You are fragrance. Tonight, why did people get saved before I preach? because the passion of worship exploded. Come on, and the Holy Spirit drew people. Come on, somebody, are you hearing me? Yeah. Your passion brings an anointing to bring others to Christ. Last point is, is that passionate people always will leave a legacy for others to follow. You think she was doing what she was doing because she said, wow, someday I'll be in John chapter 12. Someday they'll preach about me at Branded by Fire 2003. She could care less about personal accolades or how famous she would become. Her mission and her focus, come on, was blessing Jesus Christ with an unmitigated passion. Come on, somebody, give God a big hand clap because you're passionate in this place. Now, this is what we want to do here tonight. This is not a setup. This is God tonight. She gave her very best. And now, because she gave her very best offering to Jesus 2,000 years ago, that offering, because it was an offering, that offering is still impacting people today. Betty Perez, are you, are you saying that we're going to lead up to what I think you're going to lead up to? Yes. There's something about giving that opens things up. There's something about generosity. I want you to listen to me. I was preaching in Norway. I was preaching in, 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 in uh, ah, I forget the capital of Norway. Oslo, thank you. Just this year, a great youth conference. Norway is the richest country in the world. They're richer than Saudi Arabia per capita. Per capita. The youth pastor looked at me and said, Benny, can you take an offering tonight? We always take offerings, but we feel prompted for you to take an offering. I sure will. We'll take an offering. And that night I just shared with them about generosity. When we give into the kingdom of God, we are actually reflecting the image of God. Because God bankrupted heaven for you. He didn't send Gabriel to die. He didn't send Michael to die, the angel. He didn't send some little angel. No. Jesus Christ was sent. And God himself bankrupted heaven for you. There's something about giving. I got to begin to share some stories with the young people. I don't even think I talked to, told this to Pastor Michael Rowan, but that night we took in over $225,000 in one offering. Let me blow your mind. With less young people 
than we have tonight. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, Benny, you need to sow into the offering. I sowed 5,000 US dollars into that offering that night when I needed money. The Lord spoke to me when I was praying in the back and he said for me to give an offering tonight. We in our need right now, I need, I need $750,000 just to buy a building, another 150,000 to retrofit it out just for our offices. That's not even for our meeting space. And I've been praying. I said, God, what are you going to do? God, God said, Benny, when I tell you to, sow a seed. I said, okay, God. Well, God, I'm speaking at Brandon by fire. God told me, sow a seed. I said, God, I'm meeting Thursday. I need money. Sow a seed. God, my weekly budget, I'm just Paysetters International, God. It's like $12,000 a week, sow a seed. God, our budget for our church is twenty thousand is is uh is eight thousand dollars a week right now. Sow a seed. When we only took in thirty seven hundred this past Sunday. We are gonna give our best. See Benny Perez. I, I mean, please hear me, youth pastor. We're not here to bankrupt your kids. We're here to pull your kids into a tremendous blessing. Because if we learn, watch me, because this is, this is so powerful. There's one thing that needs to break in American young people in the church. It's a spirit of generosity. If that could be released, all heaven is going to just open wide open. Because your money is a direct indication of your heart. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Somebody say, Amen. We're going to take an offering. I think the ushers are getting ready, if they can get ready for this offering. The young people, don't check out on me on this. Youth pastor, I, wanna, I, know, I know that you paid to come to this. We are not, listen to me, taking an offering. We are receiving an offering. I take nothing, I receive. That what you give, it's not your tithes. Something is about ready to break in this conference. And if you haven't sensed it already, I don't know if Pastor Michael's in here or not, but Pastor Michael will tell you that this is the night that a new breakthrough is happening. Listen to me. This is all unrehearsed, unchoreographed, Pastor Michael didn't say, I'm going to get up and sing, holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. And then, Benny, when the atmosphere is right, you break out in healing. This is all unchoreographed. I want to ask you something. Allow the passion of the Holy Spirit to lead you in this giving right now. Please hear me. Because the American way is we pull out the money and we say, what could I afford to give? What could I afford to give? Whereas we're going to ask the Holy Spirit, what should I give? Come on, you're not giving me a lot of amens, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for this. Well, I have to eat. What happens if I give this amount? You know what the Bible says? When you give, it shall be what? Now, I know that was in reference to forgiveness. I know that. But the principle is still the same. When you sow, you shall also what? Now, I didn't ask Pastor Michael how much he's expecting in the offering. But I asked God for something big. None of this offering goes to me. None of it. I get paid an honorarium that's been set. They bless me. That's cool for me. Okay? But God wants to bless you. I can tell you one story and then we're going to take an offering. I want to speak to every youth pastor. I would challenge you, youth pastor, every youth pastor here. How many of you like what's happening at Branded by Fire? Come on, just you youth pastor, youth leader. You like it? I like it. Can I tell you something? If you sow your seed in this soil, you shall reap from this conference. The anointing of God that's in this conference 
There's something powerful when you sow in that. It re gets released into you. I can't explain it. There's other preachers that can explain it better than me, but I've seen it happen. Watch me. I was preaching at a church in Bend, Oregon. Anybody ever heard of Bend, Oregon? It's a small, small little place in Oregon. I did the statewide Assemblies of God Honor Bound uh, conference for the state of Oregon. I was tired, and one of my friends said, Benny, since you're in Oregon, can you come and preach for me Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night? Watch this. And I, and I said, okay, let me pray. And the Holy Spirit said, I want you to stay and bless this church of about 150 people. Sunday night, I preached my guts out, sweated. I mean, just craziness. People got saved, healed. Place was packed. Biggest crowd he ever had. And uh, Monday night, I began to get tired. And I, I, I called my wife, said, I want to come home. I can tell the pastor I'm too tired. She said, did God tell you to leave? I said, no. She said, stay. I'll see you Wednesday. I said, okay. I preached that night, and this woman caught my eye with her husband. I called this woman out, and I pulled her to the front, and I began to prophesy the secrets of her heart, and she broke down and cried. She said, everything you're saying is true. This is true. This God has, this has to be God. This, and just the power sh -pah, just hit her. She falls out. I looked at her husband. He's a big guy. He said, mm -mm, don't come back here. Well, if he was my size, I would have went back there. But he wasn't my size. So I stayed on the platform. She gets up off the floor, the power of God's all over. The next night they come back, power of God has me pull her out again. I pray for her, power of God touches her, just phenomenal. I pray for her husband, he gets touched. After that service on Tuesday, uh, excuse me, I go home that night or the next day. A week later I get an email and a lady wants to give me a gift for our ministry. I said, oh, I get these emails all the time. And I emailed her back and I called her back and she wasn't home, so I left a message. She calls me back 10 minutes later. She goes, Pastor Benny Perez, do you know who this is? I said, no, I really don't. She goes, this is Rachel, Rachel Harfam. I said, hi, Rachel, nice to meet you. She goes, you don't know who I am. I said, no, I don't. She said, I was the lady that you called out out of Bend, Oregon at that church last week. I said, oh yeah. She goes, my life has been revolutionized. The presence and power of God is incredible. She says, but you don't know. On Monday night, I went home. Ooh. I went home that night, and I went to sleep, and I had a vision, not a dream. I had a vision, and Jesus himself showed up in this vision to me. She said, you must understand, I've never had this phenomena happen. And Jesus shows up in the vision and says, Rachel, the, the reason why you were born into this rich family and the reason why you have money and, a, and a, an inheritance is because I, from the beginning of time, have had that money ordained for Benny Perez to plant a church. Give your inheritance to that young man because I have ordained a great church in Las Vegas. I said, Rachel, what are you talking about? She says, Pastor, I grew up in a very wealthy family. My, my, my grandfather founded one of the largest companies around. She says, and I have stock. And she says, I have 1,300 shares of stock and the Lord told me to give to you. And I said, how much are the shares of stock? She goes, I knew you would ask. I just checked. They're $438 a share. I scream. Ah! Do you have a calculator? I'm screaming to my staff. She, she thought I was talking to her. Yes, I have a... No, not you, Rachel. Hurry up. Come on. My staff comes. Make a long story short. When it's all said and done, she made a mistake. She actually had more shares of stock. And she's giving us... When it's all said and done, seven hundred thousand dollars. Now hold it. I still want to make sure there was the real deal. A month ago, we received a check for one hundred thousand dollars. The first installment. I ran to the bank as fast as I could. Slap that down. They screamed. Ah! Is that real? I said, it's real as real could be, baby. Go ahead, put that in, put that in, put that in. 
He looked at me and he goes, well, we know you're a pastor. How'd you get this money? I said, do you work for Dateline or 2020? They said, no. I said, no. I said, I have a rich father. He's in the cattle business. He's in precious metals, silver and gold. How much cattle does he have? Oh, a cattle on a thousand hills. He just slaughtered one and sent me the proceeds. Watch me. I didn't even tell this to Michael Rowan. It cost us $83,000 to launch our church. $83,000. God only not met that need, but he gave me a $17,000. Actually, he gave me, excuse me, he gave me a $7,000 cushion because $10,000 is tithe. It's interesting that he gave me $7,000 extra. Seven is God's number of completion. So now I need a lot of money still. And you know what God tells me to do? I need to give you an opportunity to sow. Okay, God, how much? For me, it's big, especially my need. So we're gonna ask the Holy Spirit. Are you guys ready to give right now? Because we ask the Holy Spirit. I think we could raise a great, what's it going for? You know what we need to quit doing in America? We need to quit giving to need and give to vision. How many want to see this move of God? Come on. Hit America again. How many want to see young people? Come on. Branded by fire all over America. So let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit what you should give. And I tell you, I do this all over the world. $225,000 offering in Norway, $52,000, $55,000 offering in Australia, a $51,000 offering in Seattle, Washington with 2,000 young people. Bro, that's a lot of money. And those kids had to pay to come to the conference too. But when they gave, man, I tell you, it broke something. Lord God, I pray that we will be released Come on, in a spirit of generosity. I'm not going to manipulate them, Father, and tell them how much they should give. I'm going to leave that up to you, Holy Spirit. But Lord, I ask you that you would speak to every young man, every young lady, every youth pastor, every youth ministries. Lord, I pray that they will not allow a spirit to come in and say, well, what are they doing? I already gave. I already paid for the conference. Lord, I pray they would hear your heart and your spirit. Because our passion is going to reach heaven. Close your eyes, please. I do this all over the world. I do 10 seconds of silence. And the Holy Spirit is going to drop an amount into your mind. Holy Spirit, speak to their hearts and their lives tonight, Lord. Father, let us enter another dimension at Branham by Fire. A spirit of generosity. Lord, you tell them the amount. I will not tell them. But you tell them right now. Holy Spirit, everybody's going to get an amount on your head. It could be a quarter. It could be $25. It could be 100 If you write checks, make it payable to Brownsville. It could be 1000 If you're wondering what 1000 is, it's spelled T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D. And you laugh, some of you, but I keep doing that. And then a lady writes me a $10,000 check. A lady wrote me a $100,000 check. Now I'm starting to spell million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Because God's told me that somebody's going to drop a million-dollar check in my church to help us build the church. Now, Holy Spirit, speak to them in this 10 seconds of silence in Jesus' name. Seven. Eight, nine, and ten. Come on, take that offering out right now. Take that offering, whatever God spoke to you. If there's so much and you don't have enough, then reach into your neighbor's pocket or purse and pull out the extra that you need. 
Come on, friends. Whatever the Holy Spirit spoke to you. I'm going to hear some change, but I'm going to hear the silent offering too because it's going to be from the Lord. Come on, whatever the Holy Spirit spoke to you. And when you release it, say, God, come on, a spirit of generosity is coming on my life. Come on, say, God, I'm releasing generosity. Come on, release that generosity. Come on, release it in Jesus' name. Release that. Release it in that 1, in that 10, in that 20, in that 30. Release that in Jesus' name. Come on, this is a holy moment. This is not manipulation. Come on, you say, God, this is my offering. Give your best to him. Come on, break open that perfume. Do it for Jesus tonight. Guys, my voice are shocked. Give me some music or something. Just whatever you want to sing, my brother. Come on, this is a worship time right here. Let's worship God. Come on, let's worship God. Prepare the way of the Lord. After you give your offering, go back to your seat, stand up, and begin to worship. Prepare the way. Come on, there's an offering, there's generosity. Prepare the way. Prepare the way. seconds and then you can and then you guys can take the offering wherever it needs to go and uh, let me thank you for for your generosity and know that I believe that it makes a difference I believe you'll see a difference in the rest of this conference because of the generosity that you've given tonight and so I pray the Lord just richly bless you because you've been a blessing to this conference we're gonna sing it one more time and let's just lift up our hands. Father, as we sing this song, this love song to you in closing tonight, Father, I pray that you would anoint us, pour out your spirit. Lord, we've met with you tonight. Lord, we've met with you tonight. And Father, we want you to touch us again. We want you to touch us again in Jesus' name. Come on, sing it, Chad. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world.
praise in the house. Jesus, Jesus, yes, we worship you, Lord, Jesus. The best part of this, the best part of this whole thing is we're, we're barely even halfway through. We're not even halfway through. Are you, can you take any more this week? We are going to have an awesome time. Man, I can't wait. Just got a phone call from Chris Hill. He just touched down and landed. And uh, he is, he's rip-roaring and ready to go. Benny Perez in the morning. Doors open at 8.30. And so, Ben, he didn't even get to really cut loose tonight. I mean, you probably thought, man, I was like, man, and, and, friends, he was easy. He was light on you. He was on good behavior. I kept telling him, go, boy. And he just, he was being good. I don't know why. I just told him to tear it up. Benny's going to come back and bless us in the morning session in the morning. And, uh, amen. Yeah. And while Benny is over here speaking to you, um, I've got a few things to say to you leaders over in leadership tomorrow. And uh, then tomorrow night, Chris Hill will be here. And, uh, and uh, guys, I'm telling you, we, we are just, I mean, if you've been blessed, your blessers going to be broke. You're going to be so blessed. We're just getting started. We've got pizzas out there for sale, all sorts of things. It's kind of late, so if you want to catch some dinner, you can do it. There's pizzas and stuff. God bless you guys. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow morning.